Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney and this is Creative on the Cheap. Today I'm taking a break from my fall DIY lineup to bring you an update on my new craft room. Most importantly in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I put up that plank wall all by myself. I'm also going to share with you what's coming up next in my craft room along with give you a little tour so you can kind of see how I've settled into the space and what's happening in here. So let's go. Today is stick wood installation day and I'm going to be putting up stick wood planks on this wall. I reached out to Stickwood and they were kind enough to send me some so that I could get them on the wall because I really was very intrigued about the product after reading about it, reading reviews, looking at installation. It just seems like a really good product. Now these are actual pieces of wood. They smell like wood. Like when I opened the box, it smelled so good. And look at this. The backs have three strips of adhesives. You simply peel those off and apply to the wall. So I'm planning to do this project by myself. So the first thing I've got to do is just make sure that the wall is clean, that there aren't any bumps. I need to finish sanding this little part here where I took off the chair rail, and then I'm gonna get to work. I am super excited to get this feature wall put in my craft room. So let's go. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my day. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at booze. No my wall is all prepped. So what I just did was I opened up, I had three boxes of this whitewashed weathered wood is the one that I picked out. I will link the one that I'm using down below in the description box. And I sorted them to, in piles of like sizes. So it's not like every pile is the exact same size, but they're just very similar. So that way when I go to put up the wall, I can make sure that I'm grabbing from everywhere and I'm not getting stuck, you know, just having one section that's all the same size. So there is that. That's ready to go. Now I just need to go gather up the very few amount of tools I need and then I am ready to start this project. All right, so let's go over the very small amount of tools that you need for this project, which is another reason I really, really like this stuff. So definitely a speed square will come in handy. Pencil, a level, a handsaw with a miter box if you'd like to use that. You can use a jigsaw, a table saw, a miter saw, whatever you want to use. These are tin snips that I did actually use to kind of trim just little amounts, but if you have a, par uh, a pair of the miter shears, those would be great. And then this is a ceramic roller that will come with your wood. And then a utility knife, I just use that to kind of help score the wood. So once I drew a line on the wood where I knew it needed to be trimmed, I'd score it with this and then make my cuts. So that's it for supplies. Not too bad for putting up a plank wall. And now it's time to go ahead and start working on the wall. Now, the first thing you have to do is decide where you want to start. I did a bunch of research and I, I went on and watched several different tutorials. I read the Stickwood website as well as the recommendation. Some people will start at the bottom. Some people will start at the top. Some people will start in the middle. Stickwood recommends you go down 20 inches and mark a chalk line there and start there. So after going through and marking a chalk line and then realizing how bowed my ceiling was, I decided to start at the very top. And the reason I decided that is because I planned to level each piece to each other. And that way I knew if I started at the top and I just made sure I leveled it, that when I got to the bottom, hopefully it would be even all the way across. And I'm happy to say when I got to that very last row, the entire thing was 2.75 inches. And so all of my cuts of wood just had to be 2.75. So I started with a chalk line thinking I was going to go that route, but ultimately I started at the top. Up, 
With that first piece secure, I decided I was gonna work two rows at a time. So I picked a piece that I wanted on the second row and then one at the top. I kind of dry fit them to make sure they would work. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start attaching them using my level the entire time. Now this project, because I was doing this entirely by myself, took me, it actually took me about a day and a half, but that was because I didn't dedicate my whole day to doing it. I had other things I was doing also, but I really think you could knock this out in one day if you're by yourself. If you have a helper, you could certainly do it in half a day. And this wall, in case you're wondering how much square footage, it's 120 square feet. It is my time mm -hmm. Cause I know what it's like to be broke I know what it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this life Eventually you're gonna reach the edge of the wall and here you'll need to measure from the wall to the board to decide what size you need to cut a board or your second option is to take that measurement and see if you can find a pre-cut board that measures that. I lucked out and found a lot of boards that I was able to use and not have to cut. I only ended up making six cuts for these side pieces, which I think is fantastic. But if you decide to measure out the board, all you have to do is take your board you want to go ahead and put your tape measure down, mark it towards the top of the board as well as the bottom, then use your speed square to make a nice straight line. From there, whatever saw you want to use. Again, you can use a jigsaw, a miter saw, a table saw, a hand saw. Um, my miter box, unfortunately, would not fit this five inch wide board in it so I could not use my miter box so I did go ahead and score some of these and then cut it with my handsaw which was totally fine and then the last pieces that I put up I actually did end up using my table saw yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. And I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care because I am on my way up. And I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my Man. Hi. Hey, buddy. Wow, you made so much progress. Thank you. Do you want me to help you? Uh. What are you using to put them on? It, they're sticky on the back. Ooh, that sounds fun to help. Well, can I help you? Um. Sure. Okay, so you take it and you on the seams. Roll it. Gotta push hard though. Cause I know what it's like to be broke, yeah. And I know what it's like when nothing goes your way. So I'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day. Yeah, I am on my way. Oh. Okay, so now I'm gonna let you put a board in. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to peel off, just peel off about halfway each of the strips. I'll take the roller. I won't slow down. <laughs> yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. Okay, so what you ever want to do is you're going to turn it like this, okay? And we're gonna get it up in here like this. And then we're just gonna hold on. You got, and so you gotta make sure you kind of get it nice and snug in there, in there. There we go. And then right underneath there, go ahead and press it down. Good. And then you can pull these guys, pull them all the rest of the way. Okay. And then, and then work your way down, pushing it all the way down. Okay. And then this one. And then you'll roll over it in just a minute. Then this one, go ahead and pull those off the rest of the way. And then we want to make sure that this one is where it needs to be. OK. 
okay? And then you're gonna roll over all, both this long board and that one and put, oh, sorry. And just make sure you hit the seams, like especially the edges. And you wanna, here. Yeah, and then get that one real good. This board is very long. Oh, you're already doing this, so I have you. I uh, know. If you have outlets on the wall, no big deal. This was so easy to do. I honestly thought I was gonna have to ask Spence to help me, but I was able to do it all by myself. So you wanna take the board that you plan on putting. Um, I just started with the top here of the outlet and I'm just gonna put it up against that board right there on the left. And then I'm gonna mark the outside of the outlet on the bottom of the board. Once I get a mark on each side of the outlet, then I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm gonna measure down from the bottom of the board that's above the outlet to the top of the outlet. And then once I get that measurement, I know how far down I need to go and where I need to make my cuts. Once you've cut out the area for the outlet, before you put the plank on the wall, you are gonna want to loosen up your outlet just a little bit and place some wood shims kind of behind it. This will allow your outlet to kind of come forward a little bit and still be flush with your plank wall once you get the plank on there. Once the shims are there, I'm ready to go ahead and install that piece. As you can see, I just cut it out perfectly and just put it on the wall. We are down to the bottom of the wall and your last step here is to go ahead and measure to see. Now, like I said, I used a level all the way down and my bottom piece was consistently 2.75 all the way across. So I was able to go and mark all of my boards at 2.75 and then I did go ahead and take them out to my table saw and use that to cut them. And then I just put them on and this wall was all finished. I won't slow down Cause I am on my way oh, I won't slow down Yeah, I am on Ta-da! Here's my wall! All finished. I absolutely love it. Um, I definitely am planning to do some more stick wood projects in my house. I cannot wait. Um, I, seriously, if I can do this by myself, you guys can do it by yourself. No big issue. Um, all right, now let me show you what's going on with my craft room and tell you what's going to be happening here next. So as you can see right now, um, got my nice comfy chair. My desk will probably stay because I do enjoy looking at the wood here. This corner over here, I'm going to make some kind of staging area. So when I take my thumbnail photos, you guys will probably see this backdrop quite often. Then here, I've got my craft room table in front of the window. Um, okay, I'm gonna quick side note here. This was set up because I shot an Instagram story about it. Cozy Me Candles. If you love candles and crackling wood, hopefully the mic picks this up, listen. Okay, if you love, oh, focus, that then definitely check out this company. It is a new company launching on Thursday called Cozy Me Candles. This is their fall collection and look at this, seriously. They are so cute. They have such fun names. The labels are all different. So if you go and so if you wanna check them out, they're a small business. Um, you guys know me, I don't really shout out things that I don't believe in. So um, if you sign up for their newsletter before the launch, on your first order, you'll get a package of their chocolate melts. I mean, how cute is that? Like their chocolate melts look like a candy bar. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw it at first, I thought it was a chocolate bar and I was like, oh yeah, chocolate. But then I was like, oh, don't eat it. I bet it's gonna smell amazing though. And then you'll also get a 10% code off. And then she's also giving me a Courtney 10 is the code that forever, ever, you can always get 10% off. So I'll link that down below. But yeah, side note, crackling candles. My house smells amazing. That's all I can say about that. All right, crash cart, 
Then I purchased this black wire shelf from Walmart. Uh, it was, I'm trying to remember, I think it was only like 40 bucks. I just needed the supplies that I access frequently near me right now. So like my paints, twine, um, adhesives, that kind of stuff, all right there. If you're wondering what these are, these are from Ikea. Those were hanging on the wall in my old craft room. I just hooked them on there, which is really nice. So that works out well. And then here, I've just kind of got my Cricut station. Um, that's my fall bucket of all kinds of fall stuff to work with, TV, bins. None of the decor, like that shelf was hanging in here from my guest room. So I haven't messed with really with any of the wall stuff, um, hanging any of that up. So what's gonna happen is this wall is getting a built-in. Um, I decided instead of doing my closet, I'm gonna do one here. It's gonna be a dresser that goes up to about the chair rail height so that I can put my Cricut machines on it and work on it. Six big drawers, a bookshelf with cabinet on the bottom, bookshelf with cabinet. That way it can still be a bedroom. Like it won't look like it's on a bedroom. It'll just have a built-in dresser if, you know, when we move. And then above that, dresser, I'm going to get a bigger TV <laughs> because, you know, when Hallmark Christmas movies start, I need to be able to see those really good. Um, and then for the closet, if you didn't see what I had going on in here, I picked up the, um, it's the Calyx, I think is what it's called, cubby system from Ikea. And it's working out great. The only thing about this closet is it is pretty dark. So I am going to have my electrician put a light in there at some point. So I'm just going to leave this as is because it's functioning and why fix it, right? So there we go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is my current craft space. And yeah, happy crafting, everybody. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.